Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now in the previous one we took a look at an old Xeon gaming PC in pairing with a modern RTX 5070 Ti to see how well the CPU could handle the latest and greatest games at higher resolutions when paired with a powerful GPU. A lot of you said that I should have used 32 gigs of quad channel memory to get more out of this thing as I was using the default 16 gigs of dual channel RAM that this thing came with. Today however, well I've upgraded the memory we have four 8 gig sticks of 2666 megahertz DDR4, 32 gigs in quad channel, and we'll be comparing the results to 32 gigs in dual channel to see how performance differs. I've kept the 5070 Ti in the system, of course, but we won't be running at higher resolutions today because we don't want to run into any GPU bottlenecks. Instead, we'll be testing at 1080p to ensure that any performance differences are more noticeable when using this older 12 core 24 thread chip. So we'll start with Cyberpunk 2077 at 1080p Ultra. We saw 68 frames per second here with a 1% low of 43 and a 0.1% low of 33. All the gameplay you see on screen today was from the quad channel configuration, but we do have the dual channel comparative results up as well. And as you can see, 61 FPS was the average when using 32 gigs in dual channel config. So two 16 gigabyte modules running at the same speed. It was a nice improvement of about seven eight frames per second with the quad channel configuration and our percentile lows were slightly improved as well. This is certainly a difference we could feel in more intensive parts of Night City, especially when it came to that average. For Black Myth Wukong, we have the high settings, 111 frames per second with a 1% low of 79 and a 0.1% low of 33. This performance wasn't too different from the dual channel configuration, one or two FPS more, but again, our percentile lows were ever so slightly improved and it certainly felt a little more consistent in and around those more intensive scenes. Kingdom Come Deliverance 2 at Ultra was another game whereby we could definitely pick up on the differences. We're seeing 86 frames per second on average with a 1% low of 68 and a 0.1% low of 53. Now an old Xeon in pairing with a 5070 Ti or any modern RTX card isn't the most realistic pairing in the world but as I said at the start we can ensure that we aren't running into any GPU bottlenecks in this scenario which is basically ideal for a test like this. As you can see when we compare these results to that of the dual channel configuration we're seeing at least five or six fps more on average and not only that but our percentile lows were improved too up from 61 and 51 respectively to 68 and 53. now that's not to say uh, playing games with an older xeon in dual channel mode is horrible because it isn't really the games are still running surprisingly well to be fair but it is certainly worth going for a quad channel configuration if you plan to buy an old Xeon setup luckily a lot of older pre-books will probably come with quad channel configuration anyway but it's definitely worth checking now we'll move on to spider-man 2 a game that was particularly problematic in the last video but here 71 frames per second i think was a decent result a 1% low of 51 and a 0.1% low of 44 this compares to a very nice 69 fps with the dual channel 32 gigs memory a 48 fps 1% low and a 43 fps 0.1% low so again figures are slightly up here perhaps not as much as in other games but it is still an improvement for our 4 8 gigabyte RAM modules. So we'll finalize with Starfield today, 56 frames per second. Now this is certainly a game that doesn't agree with the older Xeon CPU. Uh, 26 FPS was that 1% low and our 0.1% low basically um, confirms what I was saying, 11 frames per second. It's not good. There are certainly some moments of stutter and slowdown. Now this wasn't much of an improvement over the dual channel configuration either. 53 FPS uh, with a 1% low of 25 and a 0.1% low of 11. So those percentile lows were very similar, but in and around busier areas like Aquila, I think the difference is ever so slightly noticeable. If you stand in the same spot, um, you're gonna see that the frame rate is slightly higher if you have an FPS overlay enabled. This isn't necessarily something you're gonna feel though um, in heavy combat situations and there are certainly going to be some other titles where RAM configuration doesn't matter as much as it will in other games. You might find that simply overclocking a CPU if your chip and motherboard allows for it would probably give you better results than uh, upgrading to quad 
channel memory, but it's going to vary on a game-by-game -game basis. That said, there certainly was a difference across all of the uh, rather small selection of games that I've tested today. So if you're going for an older setup like this, an old Xeon build, then I think it's certainly worth going with a quad channel configuration, especially as RAM at the moment is certainly very cheap. And you might find that a lot of older Xeon preboots will come with quad channel RAM if they've come from server or office environments too. But that's all for this one. I hope you found the video interesting. I certainly had fun making it. Thank you for watching as always, and hopefully I'll see you all again next time.